Hello. My first attempt at using this Holga 120 panoramic camera was not that successful. I just couldn't get my brain to work in the super panoramic mode. I was still stuck on the 1x1 and the 6x9 that we're used to using Holga or any other camera. I took it downtown in Chicago. It just didn't work right. Easy. Okay. What I'm going to use is the Roly Retro 450. It's a 120 film ISO 400. Did I just say 450? Yeah, 400. It's supposed to give you a nice effect around the edges of what you're shooting. We'll give it a try. Now, let's get the bright light out of here. Okay, 16 and 12 exposures, unexposed. As you know, we're only going to get six exposures here. Okay, very easily done. Where's my tab? There it is. All nice and straight. Not so straight. Okay, I like to put my thumb back here and apply pressure because if it's going to unravel at this end, it will because I have pressure at this end. Okay, right about there. I always like to go a little bit more. Okay, nice and tight. Let's put this back on. You always have to tape up Holga's and Diana's. If not, you're going to get some nice leaks, nice flares, and it's, that's what you like. Good for you. I don't want to take my chances, so what I'm using here is some masking tape. You can use gaffer's tape, but I'm a masking tape kind of guy. Okay. While I'm doing this, why don't I show you pictures of uh, the shots that I don't think worked out so well. So let me finish this while you take a look at those shots, and then take this out. Some of those shots, as you see, are um, just a, some street shots. One of a building, I just shot straight up. I like the way that building's edges and all the geometrics, that cubistic geometric form was there. That was nice. And then the people standing there. Here's under, underneath, uh, one of the shots there is underneath the loop elevated train that runs around downtown Chicago. Uh, kind of a desperate shot. But I kind of panicked. Okay, now welcome back here. Let me put this, there we go. Our little arrows telling me to get ready. Dot, 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 and number one. Okay. Close her up. Hit me with the lights, and we are all set. There again, we have our little bevel to two hot shoes. Ah, it's all fancy pantsy. I'm just going to go out there and shoot some. Okay, again, we're in normal mode, we're on infinity, we're all set. Okay, let's take her out. And last time it was downtown, this time let's go to the, um, let's go out to the woods, let's go out to, uh, to the farm. Let's see what's going on over there. Okay, I had 
Kleiner Falten fold here. Now these modern films, they have their alrighty. There we go. The Rolly Retro 400. Put it in some foil. Wrap it up nicely. There we are. And put it right in yonder box. And let's let's see what we got today. Thank you. Let's see. Okay, let's take a look at these uh, pictures. Uh, this time I must say, I am satisfied with what I got for what I went looking for and what I went shooting. Um, first of all, let's, let me say something about this Roly retro film. It's a panchromatic film. I like the panchromatic films because they bring in the reds. They give you some nice gray tones. Uh, the orthochromatics, they stay away from the reds. It's more contrasty, more dark light, dark light. I'm a gray tone kind of guy. I like that. Uh, now this retro Roly uh, has an extended infrared spectrum. And uh, supposedly that gives you that uh, halation effect. Quite a unique effect with this film. From what I understand, regular films have that anti-halation layer and I don't know if they took the layer off of this film or if it has to do with the extended infrared spectrum, but as you'll see in these pictures, it, it is a very good halation. It, it softens things up, and what that halation means, it, it allows the darks to bleed into the whites, and it softens up the whites so they're not that harsh. Uh, and, and, but it doesn't muddy things up. And, and, and indeed, that's what it proved to do. The Roly did not muddy things up. It, it really separated things, yet allowed them to be soft. Maybe not the thing I wanted to do with the Holga, because the lens is going to do plenty of its softening. But together, they work very well. As you can see on this first shot, the tree, the very good contrast edge on that, it really separates itself from that uh, nice background of the sky, yet it does have that nice halation effect just around the edges. Looks good. The next one here, uh, we're just showing off uh, just a simple landscape, nothing big here. Uh, just showing up the wide panorama vista that this uh, Holga, I mean, this is what it's all about with the Holga Panoramic 120. I can only imagine what it would do with the 135. One day we'll try that. Okay. The next one I shot right into the sun. Um, I wanted to get something interesting. I didn't just want to shoot into the sun. I wanted to see what this lens is all about. Yes, we know it's a plastic lens. There's nothing fancy about this. Um, but it handled it very well. It, it did not confuse anything. Everything is exactly where it's supposed to be. And I like it. Very happy with that. Now, uh, the next three shots I really like. It's, it's where the... the camera and the film work well together. The fence is just great. Uh, I, I like how the whites of the fence, the actual picket, are separated from the darks, yet they work so well together. I, I wish, uh, obviously can't change the lens on this. It's a 90 millimeter lens, if memory serves me well. I would have liked to have a, a, a deeper lens so that I could bring that background forward, flattening out the film plane and causing more cubism in this. But I'm very happy with this. Uh, very, very nicely done. With these stairs, this is where the viewfinder um, proved to be very accurate. Uh, when I saw this, I knew I had, I, can, I have to have this nicely focused and cropped and framed uh, every edge, every top and bottom mattered. I said, well, I'm going to have to depend on this viewfinder. And you know the viewfinder is at the top. You don't know if it's pointing too high or too low. This one's very good. Uh, also, I, I love the, the darks here, the contrast edge. Uh, but So let's go to the last of the photos, is this barn. On the barn, 
uh, photo, you immediately notice the depth of field. Um, even though I have uh, this lens always set at infinity, uh, there's the, the, the horizon here, the back of this photo is out of focus. Uh, so it's, it's not what I'm setting the lens at, it's the actual aperture. Now the aperture settings uh, are good weather, it has a little sun, and bad weather, uh, I think it has a little cloud, I'm not, I'm not going to look at it now. Uh, so that's uh, for, for good weather, and I don't know what big of a difference it makes, the aperture is f8 and f11. Not much of a difference in my book, and I don't think there's any. So, so this is consistent with an f8 setting in an aperture setting, which would give you probably, I think officially it's 7 to 10. I'm going to go here, uh, I don't know, 10 to, to 25 feet that we see this all in focus. Let's, say, let's pull out to 30 feet. And I like it. I'm not going to complain about it, but... This is where you have to know your camera. So when you're taking a picture, you have to know your camera. And maybe next time I'll play around with some of these settings and see what I could do. But just knowing what, what your camera could do, being out on a street taking pictures or in a situation like this, know what's going to come into play. So it, it's you, usually an F8, I would say. And, and the speed is one one hundredth of a second. Okay. Uh, otherwise, I, I, I love the way the viewfinder is aligned. I, I love everything about this camera. The whole goes, uh, panoramic is very nice. You just got to get used to getting your mindset on shooting in these panoramic ways, these panoramic mode. I, I, I like it. I like it a lot. It all came together very well. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed all this. Have a good day. Have fun in photography. See you again. Thank you.